I hate Windows, but for once they actually did something useful. OpenSSH is now installed by default. No more messing with PuDi, Mobile Xterm or whatever other third party nonsense people use to pretend Windows is a real operating system. So to celebrate this rare moment of competence, we're going to play over the wires bandit level by level, using nothing but Windows. The first level isn't even a challenge, it's just proving you know how to log in. The bandit servers don't have a normal password box, you have to use SSH, which again Windows somehow has now wild times. So as you can see we're writing SSH then bandit 0, the username, at the server and after that we specify the port with minus p2220. SSH usually uses port 22 but you can set it in any way you want like these guys did. It asks us if we really want to connect and sure we say yes. We fill in the password and we're in. Uh, we're in. For the next challenge we need to find the password. Unlike Windows, Linux doesn't show you files unless you ask. That's where ls comes in. ls lists all files in the current directory, basically the Linux version of opening a folder in File Explorer. And whoa, what a challenge, they literally just put the password in a file called readme. The simplest way to read a file is with cat. Cat is short for concatenate, but nobody actually uses it for that, it's just the default way to dump a file onto the screen. We could also use less, head or tail, but those will probably be useful later, assuming Bennett ever gives us a real problem. We log out with Ctrl D and then log back in with the new password. Don't be a dumbass like me and actually use the right username, Bennett1, not two, one. Alright now we need to find the password again, but this time someone thought it'd be funny to name it Dash. The character. The problem? Linux hates this. Normally you'd read a file with cat file name, but if you try cat dash, Linux just sits there waiting for input because dash is usually a shortcut for standard input. Instead of reading the file, it just waits for you to type something manually, like this. Adding dot slash tells Linux, no really it's an actual file, just read it. And just like that, password acquired. Moving on. Again, we log back out and back in with the next username, Bandit2, and the just acquired password. Next user, next problem. There's a file here with the password, but instead of giving it a normal name, someone thought, you know what would be fun? Spaces. Normally, you just go cat spaces in this file name, except Linux sees this as four separate files, none of which exist. The fix, use tab. It auto completes it, and as you can see, it works with backslashes. Another way is to wrap it in quotes. Both let Linux know it's all one file name. This time the file is hidden in a folder called in here. In Linux, any file that starts with a dot is invisible unless you specifically ask to see it, because apparently adding a dot makes things top secret. To list everything, including hidden files, use ls-la. L gives details, file size, permissions, timestamps, A shows hidden files files that start with dot. As you can see, I'm still in my root directory, that's why I need to specify the folder to see what's in it. And just like that, there it is, now you just read it like any other file. But because we're not in the same directory as the file, we still need to add the directory to it, so it'll be cat in here slash dot 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 hiding from you. Moving on. This time, the password is buried in a pile of random files inside the in here directory. There's no way we're opening them one by one, like some medieval scribe, so we need to filter out the junk. First, step into the directory. Now, let's see what's inside. Yep, a mess of files. We need to find the one that actually has text and isn't some binary garbage. To check what kind of files we're dealing with, use file star. This command checks every file and tells us what type it is. Look for the one labeled ASCII text. That's our target. Once you find it, just read it. And that's the password. No digging, no guessing, just a Linux doing the work. And that's it for the first five. 